Greetings everyone and welcome to a new first taste for the channel where today we're going to be checking out the game Patron, or rather its demo. This was released during Steam's Next Fest, but the demo is still available and I strongly urge any of you who are fans of the survival city builder genre to check this out. This game is developed and published by Overseer Games and has a planned release for around August time this year, so actually not that far away all things considered. And and as such, you can sort of feel that in the fact that the demo is quite polished. It is certainly not as bare bones as many demos often are. Now, what sets this game apart from its peers in the city building, or rather survival city building genre, is a bit more emphasis on the kind of social interactions of your citizens. It's still not super small scale. You still don't really look at the citizens on an individual basis and, and, and you know, have a personal relationship on a one-to-one -one level. You know their, their children's names and their favorite pets and foods, etc., etc. But their general political leanings as a group start to matter in this game. And it does add a uh, an interesting twist to the uh, tried and tested formula. Now, with that all being said and done, and as with any first taste, there's always the potential for this to be extended or maybe turn into something more than a first taste. So if by the end of the video, you find that you enjoyed what you saw and you want to see more, do let me know with a comment down below or indeed a like on the video. But with that, let's go ahead and jump into the game. Now, to begin your town, you obviously need a town name. We're going to go with Dapper Dell, and you can choose your banner from among many such banners. There's all kinds of to choose from here. But we're going to go with a, a nice uh, green and grey setup here. I think that one looks lovely. Right now, with the demo, you can only pick a single map type, and that is the Mediterranean. You have soil fertility or richness and weather, and this changes based on the various map types that are available, but I imagine all of these will be available when the game comes out uh, around August time. But for now, we only have one to play with, but honestly, it's uh, more than enough. You've got a couple of other options as well. We're going to leave all of those on normal just for the initial first taste experience. Now, it's a, quite a nice little uh, splash screen here as we're loading in. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and quickly pause. Now, all we've got is a townhouse and a bunch of people outside of it. There's a load of things that we're going to be able to do with this eventually. Uh, but right now, our town is nowhere near ready to start worrying about that. But what we can do is have a quick look around. And if you are feeling that this looks very, very similar to Banished already? Well, that's completely fair because it does. Uh, the, the, the whole uh, survival city builder genre tends to look much the same early on. What on earth is that? That, oh, that is a, that's a boar's den. Okay, fair enough. Uh, but we start next to a little river. Uh, it seems that when time stops, the uh, <laughs> the river does not care. Uh, nor do the birds, apparently, but the boars do, which is good to know. We've got what looks like a little uh, overturned little ship there. The crabs also don't care, but the foxes do, and many of the other things as well. We've got a bunch of trees, different types of trees. We've got um, some rocks, some iron ore around here, lots of resources. Again, I'm sure you're going to be very familiar with all of this if you've played any game in the survival city builder genre, and especially if you played Banished. There's a lot of similarities here. If I haven't decided to name this after what would Banished be like if it continued to be developed into 2021, then just take away that this is basically what Banished would be if it uh, continued to be developed into 2021. Now, we've got some gold, got some tools, stone, iron, some food, lumber, firewood, and coal. We've got 10 adults, six young people, three children that uh, are a part of five distinct family units. Right, the first thing that we're probably going to want to do is slap down some uh, housing. Now, you can go with tents, provides the weakest housing for your settlers. Citizens who live in some form of housing pay taxes, which is your main source of coins in the game. We could also go straight for houses. Standard wooden house provides housing to your settlers. Citizens who live in some form of housing pay taxes. And again, this one is a little bit more costly, but does give us uh, a bit more tax. Uh, I believe it's also more, more voluminous, so you can have more people living in them, and a little bit more insulated and so on and so forth insulation obviously is going to matter because we do need to give them fuel this game does have seasons there's also the shelter which will allow a lot of people to live in there 
and is, in my opinion, a good early choice. But since we have got tents, let's just throw something down, shall we? Uh, we've got the, the classic grid. Uh, let's have the tents kind of arrayed down the side here. Let's pop one there. Pop another one here. Now we've got five families, remember. So how about we just pop down a total of five tents? There we go. Now, we are automatically going to gather any of the resources on the tiles that we have placed the building down on. We can go over to the job board, and currently we haven't got anyone who's set up as a carrier. I would actually like a dedicated carrier, but that is the only non-worker job that we have available. Until we build some specific worker buildings that uh, produce something of, of perhaps a, a lumber mill or a, a forester's hut, so on and so forth, we're not going to have those to worry about. So housing will fix itself very soon. Housing shortage. Some of your families have nowhere to live. Build more houses. Already on it. The next thing I would suggest is to immediately go for something to uh, feed our populace. Uh, let's see, we've got the ranch there. We've also got research as well, and, and this is something that, that is different to Banished. We learn things over time. I would really like to spend 25 of my coins and 20 of my wood to research Fisherman's Hut. Allows the construction of the Fisherman's Hut. The best source of fresh fish and crabs. In fact, the only source of fresh fish and crabs, as it happens. Now, uh, this will allow for four people to move in there, which is grand. And you can see here the overall kind of, well, not so much politics, but the, the sort of uh, satisfaction of a person's uh, more conceptual needs. So their health, their safety, how safe they feel, um, how they feel about the immigration status of the colony. Are there... Uh, too many immigrants that that sort of mentality or are we not giving uh, are we not allowing enough immigrants in when when someone needs aid how they feel about our loyalty to the liege that is a king in this game uh, religious activities education basic goods luxury goods taxes how they feel about the taxes and housing how they feel about the the general state of the affa of affairs in the colony as, as regards to housing. Now, this is a good summary of everyone's feelings. By and large, people are, are more or less stable on everything, except for safety. People don't feel particularly safe, and they feel relatively healthy and uh, right now have uh, decent enough education, but that certainly needs to improve. We've got three people there. There we go. Everyone in the colony is now properly set up. As for research, we're making our way towards our, our first research. Now, we're going to want probably a, a depot, provide some storage space for resources. However, your townhouse, I believe, can store some things. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, we're off to a very good start, sire. Everything looks in order. The people have food, firewood, and are content. Good work indeed. Well, that is remarkable, but uh, it does seem that that isn't telling me whether we have a dedicated storage, and I really would like a dedicated storage. However, there is one other thing you can do, and I really like this. Turn on the grid. Oh, the amount of times I'm playing Banish that I misaligned buildings because I couldn't see a grid. Really quite frustrating. That is a godsend. Right, I would like to chop down some trees. Let's gather all of the trees around this initial area here. Let's take everything back. There we go. And hopefully we can store a lot of that in the depot. We can also place down some roads as well. Uh, roads and bridges. We've got wooden bridges, large wooden bridges. We've got some signposts. Helps your citizens find their way quicker. They move 5% faster while near a road sign. I like that. I actually like that idea a lot. I, uh, I hadn't uh, noted that before, but that is actually pretty cool. We'll just add in a couple of roads here and indeed there. We will probably strip these away in time, but for now, this will be helpful for people moving around. And can I pop down a, a signpost? Oh, that's got a very, very generous uh, area, so I'm, I'm all about this. Let's uh, pop a signpost right there. Everyone will know where they need to go. Right, as for research, we have managed to get the fisherman's hut. Now, we can start working on quarries. We've got a, quite a lot of research items, and uh, as I mentioned, a lot of them 
are already in the game. This demo is very, very well prepared, which I suppose is to be expected considering the game's coming out in just a few months. Right, cleared paths, increases herbalist hut's efficiency if near a forest forester's hut. Tracking prey increases a hunting lodge efficiency near a forester's hut. There's a lot of synergies that you can open up. Ice fishing increases the fisherman's hut efficiency during winter. Food production in general, the food production policy. Now, this is something that we could put in the town hall and we can, like, kind of dedicate uh, the, the, the town hall towards this policy and it would it would help out a lot in uh, many different ways but right now i think we want to try and get down towards the toolsmith because we will eventually run out of those so let's start with the quarry allows the construction of quarries used for extracting stone let's get that on the go all right the depot is going up but we're going to need more things besides we now have a fisherman's hut though and i would very much like this to be placed uh can we maybe get that down there? There we go, right at the mouth of the river. That being said, though, uh, perhaps if we uh, turned it around a little bit, it would be a bit nicer. Can I find a spot? That spot will not quite allow it. Have we got one? Yes, we have. I just kind of like the boat facing out to the water and the uh, the kind of little the, the pier to be facing the land where possible. I don't think it actually affects the operation of the fisherman's hut in any measurable way but it matters to me so we're gonna do it like that there we are let's uh, just hook this up all the way over there there we go and i'll pop a little road down there as well and i guess i'll pop a little signpost right at the right at the edge i really like that i really like that i can't can't overstate it you know what i'm gonna move this one though uh i have decided against that position can i cancel clearing can i cancel the building though uh, I might have to wait for it to be finished, oh well. But let's try and keep the signposts in the corners of the rooms. I think that will look a little bit better. Now, as for production buildings in terms of dealing with lumber, we've got Forester's Hut, plants and cuts down trees to produce lumber. We've got the sawmill, we've got the herbalist hut. Now, I'd like the Forester's Hut to be a little bit further up. I'd, I'd, re I'd reasonably appreciate this one to be more buried into the forest. So let's pop this one around about there. Actually, let's go a little bit further still. We'll pop it up there, and I might go to the effort of adding in a, a couple of houses up, up that way so that people who work there don't have to travel all the way into the town. Now, as we saw in research, there are a number of things that can benefit from the forester's hut. So, a herbless hut will be more efficient if it's near a, horus, a forester's hut because that will allow it to just have uh, quicker access to the undergrowth. Now, in Banish, typically you didn't want that. You wanted kind of the forest to be more or less untouched because old growth forests were, were better for gatherers and, and herbalists. Tracking prey, hunters would also get an uh, efficiency bonus if it's near a forester's hut. So we want both the herbalist and the hunter's hut to be built close by. So let's get ahead with that. We've got the hunter's lodge. Uh, unfortunately, we can't easily see what these buildings are going to look like, but I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap between them. There we go. I would like the uh, gatherer's hut. Gathers various wild fruit, mushrooms, and other produce. Well-forested areas are more abundant in these resources, so we'll pop that one just about there on the opposite side. And finally, we want the herbalist hut as well. Now, this one is a yonking great huge building, my lord. But work efficiency will be really quite nice. Uh, because of this area, we'll pop it down there, 123% work efficiency, just based on the forest that we're in. Uh, now that we've got the quarry, I would like to get the cleared path, but we're going to need some more taxes for that one. Uh, right, is there anything else we want to really pop up here? I think we want a depot, just so that we can uh, gather the materials that we're, we're producing here. I'm going to pop the depot just a little bit. Well, we may as well pop it down on the end that way. If anyone uh, is up this way, they can use the uh, the depot being really close by to save on some walking time. Uh, let's pop a signpost right by the depot as well. Just, you know, in case our, our citizens are confused with where things are. Now, we can turn this off with uh, cycling through the grid views. We've got the ore grid, so we can see the best places to have ore mines. We've got the just the general build grid, the soil fertility. So where we've actually set that up is in an area of low fertility, which is actually reasonably good because we don't want to waste that farming area. But there we are. Looking good so far, and it looks really good, speaking about that. Now, we've got our fisherman's hut, so we can pop someone in there. Now, one of the things I really, really like about this game is you can upgrade 
your buildings. So I can expand it so there's more worker slots. So I can have two fishermen working from this one fisherman's hut. Or I can give sturdy nets, which will give us plus 30 production. I am all about having an extra fisherman, though. So let's pop that down. Now, it's going to cost a little bit more to expand it even further. I would like two fishermen working there at all times. Let's start bringing in those delicious, delicious noms for our people. Uh, overhaul here. I would like to start gathering all of the stones from around here. Where pass. There we are. That'll do. Let's uh, make sure we got them all. Yep. And I guess all of the ores as well. There we are. There should be a bunch of those in there. And that should help out quite a lot. Now, you don't want to reduce your available workers too aggressively because they are the ones doing all of this work, chopping down all the trees and building the everything. You do have some uh, quite generous time controls, up to 10 times speed. We'll leave it on two just for the time being. Now, I've set up quite a lot of work over there and we've got a lot of mining work down here. Actually, we'll pop it up to five and we'll just see how that goes. Uh, over here, we can see the general production. Right now, we're producing 315 fish per worker per, per year, so 630 in total. I could increase that uh, with a little bit of help, but we'll, we'll hang tight there. Now, hopefully, our taxes are going to start helping out a bit here. We're going to make 120 gold from the tents per year, and as you can see, they've started to stock various items into inventory to help out. Now, let's, uh, let's be gone with this. The king sends his regards. Sire, the king has sent over a ship full of goods for our fair city. He is clearly pleased with us. Firewood, that is actually rather good. We uh, we will gratefully accept the, the gift from our king. All right, let's go ahead and demolish this building, though. Uh, if indeed we can. Where is that? Demolish buildings. So here we are. Pop. There we are. That'll look a little bit better now. Right, the next thing that we're going to want is actually a an ability to make firewood. So we're going to want a lumber mill, which will produce 800 firewood per year. And because I want that to be available to our citizens down here, we're going to place it near to the uh, depot and quite far away from where we're actually gathering the lumber. We're just going to have to trust our carriers to bring the lumber down to us. That should be fine, and they should be able to uh, store it in here. We've already got quite a lot of lumber from just the uh, the work that we've been doing in this area. Now, we've got a couple more jobs. We've got a hunter. We've got a herbalist. Let's get peeps working in there. There we are. Now, eventually, they will wander over. Now, what we, we've got quite a lot of different upgrades here, actually. Expert skinning will produce more leather. Expert butchering will produce more venison. Um, trapper training will just work better in the winter. And expansion. We'll get more workers. And I really like the idea that you can customize your buildings. Uh, over here, worker, most buildings have the worker slots upgrade. But uh, the uh, and generally, most of them have some sort of production efficiency upgrade. But beyond that, some of the buildings do have quite unique upgrades based on the type of building they are. Now, the forester's hut is going to be an important one. Let's get someone working in there. Now, uh, chops and plants trees and gathers lumber. Now, we can improve axes. So, you know, all the work will be a little bit better. Fertilizer, tree growth speed, plus 15%. That is going to be important, but I am growing a little bit concerned about our use of money right now. We used 82 this month, monthly produced 54. We definitely want a bit more than that. Uh, gatherers, let's go ahead and pop one in there for now. Let's not go too too hard on that. We've got three workers still, and we've got many more buildings yet to produce. I do want a labor force able to construct. That's going to be an important one. And there we go. We've now got someone who can chop lumber into firewood, and that is going to be a big, big help on in the in the long run. Now, with the shelter, a fine solution when your town gets too crowded, too fast. But it should only be temporary. Citizens living in a shelter suffer a penalty to happiness and don't expect any children to be born here. The lack of privacy does cause some problems. But this is still a very good building to have as just a, a general uh, help to your, to your colony. Having one in the colony, in my opinion, is just a, a good move. You don't know when you're going to have a bunch of refugees. And a lot of people can live in here once they won't be happy about it, but it gives you a bit of a buffer against needing to build new houses, which you're going to be constantly doing, by the way. Now, I would like to start moving, with that said, our 
population into some better housing. And I uh, kind of like a, a better road as well, if I could have one. Now, where's the front door? Is that the front door? Yes, it would appear so. So let's pop that one down there. And another one besides. Another front door here. I'll give them a little bit of space between them. That'll do. And then I would like to expand this road out a little bit. Let's make this a, a nice big thoroughfare. These will be the uh, the workers who are going to live down by the docks here. Not exactly the best smelling place to, to live. I mean, yeah, well, actually, it's not like it's a fish market. That's a little bit of a different thing. And uh, we're not really catching nearly enough fish for it to be a huge problem. But, oh, wow. Well, the hunters are gonna, uh, in a pretty, pretty good position. The gatherer's hut is right next to a ball den. Okay, you're not going to have to go very far at all to do anything, actually. Uh, as far as the materials we've got over here, uh, let's have a look. We've got some leather. Uh, have we got any venison? So many different items of, uh, of uh, food in this game. Many, many different types. I'm not sure if uh, the depots consider everything to be stored. Like when we're looking in one, we're seeing the capacity across the entire area. We might be, actually. So I'm not sure if the depots are local storage or whether they're honestly just giving some sort of global capacity. Uh, either way, uh, we've got what we need today. We've got a couple of nicer houses here. Let's go ahead and break down these ones then and have people move out. Though I'm not sure if they'll do it on their own. We'll see. But these houses offer a bit more comfort and I would very much like people to move into them as soon as possible. And this one can go as well. There we are. And we can also get rid of these paths. Or at least I think we can. Do I need to specifically... Oh, maybe we can't. I would imagine we'd be able to... Cl uh, council clearing. Hmm. Maybe we can just build over them. Ah, there we go. We can actually get rid of them. There we are. Good, good, good. Let's bring up the grid again just so I can see where I'm removing these from. I kind of feel like this uh, signpost needs to be elsewhere now, but well, I'll resist it for the time being. But there we are. That's significantly, uh, significantly happier for the people living there. We've already got one person living with five of four. That's not great. So the king has sent over a ship full of goods to our fair city. He's clearly pleased with us. Some more lumber. Okay, well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I wonder when the king is going to start demanding things of us. That's almost always a thing that happens in these sorts of games. Uh, let's pop you down as well, once again. Want a little bit of a gap. Uh, can we fit another house in there? No. Well, that's fine. Uh, we will set up a couple more houses around here. And winter has arrived, but we have built out all of the homes that we're going to need. Now, the homes can be upgraded with insulation uh, for a modest sum. Uh, it reduces firewood and coal upkeep by quite a lot, actually. So, I'm kind of thinking this would be a very worthwhile investment for us so let's uh, get those down now we've still got some people living in the shelter for reasons i'm not entirely certain about but uh considering especially considering we've got new homes for them i'm certainly not going to delete the shelter in order to shift people out of there but it might also be a case that uh, as soon as uh there's food stored in these areas that people will move in. But our population has been growing. We've currently got seven children, five young uh, uh, young people, and 11 adults. So one of the, the young people has uh, matured to adulthood, and we've had uh, an extra child as well. At this point, I think we can probably afford to pop down an extra carrier. We're not doing a lot of work during winter, but as you can see, the world has changed quite a lot. The uh, The river has frozen over obviously the ocean has not but our production of food will go down a reasonable amount so it's probably going to be worth looking at our various buildings right now efficiency is at 90 percent we're only producing 254 per year if we go ahead and pop down the cash then we can improve that a fair old bit so uh, hopefully that was going to help out now it's 318 per year we have a look at the forest's hurt. You're doing fine. I mean, the winter is affecting everyone a little bit, but by and large, things are going okay. We do have a quarry building that we can build, though uh, obviously we're going to need a little bit more 
cash for that one. Uh, there's all sorts of things, apiaries, candle shops, brickworks, etc, etc. But we do need to try and get towards the toolsmith. Now, construction goods. In enacting a policy increases the production of quarries, coal mines, iron mines, forester huts, toolsmiths, and brickworks. Well, we don't even have that yet. We can also get decorative hedges. We can get mines. Once we've got mines, then toolsmiths actually become a realistic option for us. Going for these will help with food production in general, and that is definitely something we want to do. Uh, we also do need to provide our people with clothing. And so getting to the clothes shop, uh, all of this down here is, is pretty much essential for us, uh, uh, by and large. We've also got the gathering hall, automatically upgrades the townhouse to a gathering hall, which opens up more options regarding social policies. Additionally, allows the planting of wheat fields and apple orchards, and the construction of ranches to herd chickens. This is a very much something that we are going to want to try and get to as soon as possible. But it is winter time and uh, people are taking their sweet time getting everything done. So we're actually going to risk pumping up the uh, the speed here to 10. And generally speaking, we should be producing more uh, more food than we're actually eating, which is a good place to be. In terms of firewood, well, I mean, that could be a little bit better, but thanks to the insulation, I'm sure that everyone is doing reasonably well. Now, that has been activated and uh, can't be upgraded any further. And like some of the items, you can actually take them a little bit beyond, uh, beyond where they start off. Uh, there we go. So you might have two, three levels. I've not seen, I've, or rather, I've not played the game for, uh, far enough to see if there's much beyond level three. That seems to be where things slow down and stop. But gradually, things are getting a bit better. Our herbalist hut is actually doing a really, really good job of bringing in the cash there. All right, now then, let's have a quick look. We've got a quarry that I wouldn't mind popping down to start bringing in some of the... Uh, some of the stone that we're going to need. And we've got a, a reasonable spot over here, I suppose. Uh, let's pop a quarry just about here. Uh, actually, no. Well, let, let's see if we can't fit it. No, I can't, I can't quite squeeze it in. But this will do for now. Let's get a, a new quarry up and running. Hopefully more of our children will grow up in uh, swift order. Because we definitely need more workers. Let's pop down another sign over here as well, just so people can navigate back to the town nice and fast. That one, well, we'll have a little bit of a gap there. But by and large, this should work out for us. Now, we don't have anyone in these houses yet, but hopefully people will start moving in soon. Uh, how are we doing for firewood right now? Let's have a quick look. We've got plenty. We've got loads of firewood available, so that shouldn't be too much of a problem and we're now in February so winter should start coming to a close at this stage and as I say that it looks like the snows are beginning to abate marvelous okay I'm very very happy with that now let's check in on the town hall oh wow everyone is pretty much overjoyed with the way things are going so far. I am actually really, really happy with that. We're going to need to do a fair bit more research before we can start getting most of the other uh, options available to us. But uh, for now, let's go with the mine. We don't want to run out of tools, and we are going to uh, if we aren't careful. Now, down here, I wouldn't mind popping down 50 gold to increase the efficiency of our fisherman's hut. There we go, and up to 819 fish a year. Uh, it looks like we're going to be uh, very, very reliant on a fish diet for a while, because we're not bringing in nearly as much venison. Not even close. Right, we need 100 gold before we can get the toolsmith. That is going to be the next, uh, the next big thing for us, but uh, with that done... We should have someone available to pop down into the quarry. I'm only going to go for one person for now. I don't think uh, we've got the workers really to afford us much beyond that. But this does give us plenty to work with in terms of our uh, stone supply. I'm not sure if that will eventually run out or not, or, or whether that's something that we're always going to have. But we need to research stone housing before we can really test that out properly. Uh, it doesn't look like it will run out, which is actually quite nice. Uh, it's got 136 there, or rather we produce 136 per year, and we're not really using it up 
that fast. Now, sadly, we are going through this reasonably fast, and I don't think it's due to a lack of efficiency at the sawmill. I think it is more that our forester's hut is struggling. Now, we do want to replace these trees uh, rather quickly if we can, but I think we're going to wait on the improved axes. Either that, or we can just pop down a second worker. Actually, sure, we're going to go for a second worker. There we are. Let's uh, get you in there, and that should help out quite a lot. Though it does bring our workers down to one, and now we're starting to really feel the pinch on our labor force. But hopefully... We'll be able to get uh, more of these trees planted because one person was kind of prioritizing chopping the trees and we weren't seeing much being replanted. So this will at least start to help with that. We're probably still going to need to work on getting the efficiency up a little bit, though. Gain favor with the Holy Church. Church dignitaries are offering us a way to gain some favor with them, though that's really just a way for them to tell us they want uh, what they want done. Indeed. Fine. Send them what they want. Let's do them a favor. Iron, minus 43. Or, I'm not interested in doing them any favors. Um, peasants and laborers, religion, minus 6. Merchants and gentry, religion, 10. Okay, so the gentry don't really like to have have this uh, happen in that direction. But this doesn't really change anything except lose some iron. So, I'm going to go with that one. We've, we've got uh, the means to build a mine on the way. So that shouldn't be too much of a, a big problem for us to fix. But we need to wait on a little bit more, uh, a few more of our young people maturing to adults and also on some more money. So I shall bring you back when we're ready to progress. Ooh, it looks like the mainland isn't doing so well. There is unrest on the mainland. Sire, we're receiving word of civil unrest on the mainland. The people there are rioting. Should we ignore it or interfere? Send whatever we can afford to the king. We remain loyal. Uh, we'd send a bunch of firewood, tools, and leather. Peasants and laborers, loyalty, 15. Merchants and gentry, loyalty, minus 5. Interesting. Keep quiet about it. But prepare everything to accommodate the incoming refugees. Merchants and gentry, loyalty, 15. Uh, immigration, 20. Uh, peasants and laborers, loyalty, minus 5. And immigration, minus 10. Okay, but we would expect three immigrants. Hmm. I kind of want the immigrants, I'm going to be honest. Okay, we're going to keep quiet about it, but prepare everything to accommodate incoming refugees. Righty-o. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, we're once again on a housing shortage. So really? Are we honestly on a housing shortage, or are you making that up? Because I can see a whole bunch of houses down here with plenty of room. There we go. Oh, right, they were two separate families with those three refugees. Uh, either way, though, we have instantly got more workers, and that is fantastic news because we want more gatherers. That will help out a great, great deal. Our hunter is currently producing 307 uh, venison a year and 133 leathers. Our gatherer, though, is producing 595 a year. We could give them large baskets, which would... You know, increase that by uh, by half again, which actually that's a lot of food. And we've just added a bunch of mouths. If it, you know what? Sure, we're actually going to pop the money down on that one. I was hoping to use it for other things, but uh, I feel that we might actually need the uh, the help in keeping keeping up with uh, the uh, the demand for food. At this point, I think we kind of need another another hunter as well. All right, well, we're back to having the same amount of free workers as we had before, which is kind of annoying. But at the same time, we are now producing a whomping great deal of extra uh, extra items. Ooh, what's, what's going on here? What, what is that? Resource required in production are not arriving to this building. Not enough coins to resume production. Ah, yes. Well, hopefully we will have some more money flowing soon enough. Uh, we are kind of teetering on the edge, though. Perhaps another another house would be in order. Uh, I think so. Let's go ahead and pop down a couple more houses just around here. Once again, I would like a little bit of a gap. Um, just one for now. And I think... Well, actually, no. Let's go for two. And let's pop the other one just around here. There we are. Got to try and get the orientation the right way. There we are. Well, it gives us a bit of room to grow later on that way. There we are. I'm trying to keep the, the roads in the, the main part of the town a little bit more robust. 
because I, I think it gives us something a, a nice bit of visual variance between the the outposts and these areas now I am considering putting down a, a house over here I don't know if this game worked like banished did in that if someone could move houses to be closer to their work they would because then it made sense to have one or two um, homes nearby to an area like a like a, a, a cluster of gatherers and and um, Foresters because it meant that they would have very little little travel time to get and to and from work right now They have a lot of travel time, which uh, isn't going to really help us out in the long run Either way though people are starting to get more food and that can only be considered a very good thing There we are monthly produce is now 218 and monthly use 155. We're no longer teetering on the edge and I'm very very happy with that. Monthly produced, 100. Monthly used, 45 for coins as well. Okay, things are starting to look a little bit better. We're almost at that 100 we need. In fact, if we uh, just wait a few moments, I'm sure we'll get there. Unless time has stopped. No, no, it hasn't stopped. Good, good, good. Uh, okay, well, I, I, apparently I was wrong. Oh, ah, of course, the moment I closed it. Nevertheless, there we go. Let's get the toolsmith up and running. Now, we're both going to need a mine and a toolsmith to be able to make use of this, which is a little bit of a parch because, uh, again, we're a little bit shy on our labor force. But I think what we're going to do is we're going to pass a little bit more time. It's currently October year two, but we need to get more of our of our youngsters into the workforce. We need them to grow into adults because obviously we're not going to put them to work while they're youngsters. Don't don't worry though we are actually getting more children as well so uh, you know slowly the colony is growing and what did i say a king's ransom my lord the king's advisors have sent a list of requests no official reason has been noted only a list mm, they're bleeding us dry but we can't go against the king what send them a formal decline make it as polite as possible though uh no we uh <laughs> we are going to uh Give them the 87 firewood that they want right in the middle of bloody winter. Oh, wow, what a massive scallywag. But we've had to go ahead and build a mine. One of the things that uh, I didn't properly illustrate, but we've kind of covered a little bit, is that some buildings require upkeep. For example, the herbalist needs money. The hunter needs lumber and iron because the hunter needs to make more arrows for, uh, for hunting with. Uh, not all of the buildings require it. There are obviously some which are actually producing something, so the sawmill which turns wood into firewood needs wood as uh, as constant upkeep, but everything else uh, is, is uh, generally a little bit easier to deal with. Though that being said, we need uh, plenty of wood and gold for the fishermen to keep their boats in good order. Does the quarry need much? The quarry just needs gold and the iron mine needs, uh, needs a decent amount of wood, probably for pit props. I would imagine. But all things said and done, things aren't going terribly. We have more or less been staying steady with our population, though. But uh, at this point, I feel that iron is becoming a concern. So I am going to go ahead and pop down. Oh, there we go. A bunch of people just grew up. Well, that's fine. Oh, well, maybe it's not, actually. Uh, no, no, we've definitely got housing. Go ahead. Go, go move in. It's fine. Uh, we don't have any firewood because suddenly the uh, new occupants of a house needed to go and grab some firewood and start actually uh, filling that house with goods. So, but that is generally fine. It's okay. We will manage. It, it's February the, uh, in the third year right now, and winter has basically come to an end. So, yes, everyone got cold right about the right time. We still need firewood, but we're not going to need it as aggressively as we did before uh we've got insulation there do we have insulation on everything everywhere no let's uh, get insulation down here as well then please let's make sure our peeps are kept nice and warm because uh, that will be an issue otherwise i could go ahead and reduce the upkeep that would actually be good it basically reduces garbage so we need less lumber for the same amount of firewood uh, mechanization would increase production, but we are digging into our dwindling tools at that point. But uh, hmm. I'm going to say, let's have a look at research. How close are we to stone houses? Oh, we're quite far away from that, it seems. 
Uh, Stone Road and the likes much further on. No, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to uh, solve this another way. So I'm gonna go ahead with reduce upkeep. There we are, and then mechanization will probably be the next thing we go to. But that has actually helped out a decent amount in terms of upkeep. But yes, people are still a little bit cold. We're going into March now, though. People, come on. Uh, let's not be silly. And we've got it's fine. You just need to huddle together for warmth. That's all. A ship has sunk off the coast of our fair city. We should send a search party and see what they can find. Organize a search and rescue party, focus on helping any survivors, two adults and one child. Uh, but the peasant and laborers, immigration minus 10, the merchants and gentry would be, be happy about the extra workforce. Or send a party and search for any goods floating around. The town needs anything we can retrieve. Wow, way to, to hit me with a horrible choice. We actually need firewood. But no, we're not going to turn away the immigrants. Get out there. There, there were children afloat. If worst comes to the worst, we can put the children in the generator. No, wait, this isn't uh, this isn't Frostpunk. Okay, we don't need any children. We don't have a generator. Uh, well, actually, we do need the children. We just don't need the children for the generator. It's fine. Things haven't become quite that grim dark yet. But we do now have a lot of extra people. So let's uh, get some more folks helping out, shall we? I think so, yes. And with that, one person in there. Okay, well, it looks like we're probably going to want... To have some more homes then. Uh, so let's pop down a couple more, shall we? I think so. Let's pop one there. Can we fit one in? Ah, that's a shame. But we can definitely fit a house over here. There we go. Let's always try and keep uh, one or two spare houses available for anyone who might, uh, might need to move in. We can expand our production. The only issue here is that while that is going to give us obviously a lot more firewood, it's going to put a real strain on our forester's hut, I think. Perhaps we should go ahead and improve the amount of people who can work here as well. Actually, no, we've, we've got expansion one. That doesn't go any further. Okay. Well, we may need a second forester's hut then in that case. That's a bit of a pain, to be perfectly honest, but... Uh, we'll see, because we use a lot of a lot of wood for very many different buildings. Uh, but let's see, how much is the toolsmith going to cost? The toolsmith will require coal, so we can't fuel it with lumber. All right, that means we need a second mine. Specifically, we need a coal mine. Uh, right. Well, let's have a look at the ore map once again. Okay, so it should be fine just along the path. So we'll pop this one down about here, I think. Right there. And we'll just extend the path down. Yes, I know. We are running out of lots of materials. But the, by and large, our people are being taken care of. The main thing is that no one is, uh, no one is really suffering uh, from, from any great deal of want in, in regards to food or, well, hopefully warmth for the most part. But uh, we, are, we are struggling a little bit with that. So, we're probably going to want to have a look for another forester's hut. Uh, we could perhaps have one. Oh, we've already got one over there, so I'm, I'm kind of inclined to have the other one down here. But that is going to necessitate the movement of this signpost. Let's get rid of you. There we are, and we'll slide this on up there instead. There we go. And we'll get our new forester's hut right about here. Pop you in there. There we go. That'll help out, though you can definitely see the ring as our forests have slowly been spreading out. Now, that is going to be gradually reducing the efficacy of our various other buildings. But hopefully we can manage it, more or less. How's food looking right now? Not looking good, to be perfectly honest. Not looking good. Uh, let's see. We've got more than enough to be able to pop down a third miner. Uh, we will get that one built soon, but I think we're going to expand production at our gatherer's shelter. We can take the, the expansion even further with the gatherer's shelter, which is nice. But we definitely need to get on top of both wood and food. That's going to be a, a, an increasingly um, severe problem if we continue to have a shortage there. Ah, yeah, the king has sent over a ship full of goods to our fair city. He's clearly pleased with us. Ah, oh, thank goodness. Okay, 
The king is uh, is reasonably happy with the level of loyalty that we have exhibited, which is uh, the bare minimum of loyalty, really. Uh, so I'm okay with this, but uh, once again, it's only a matter of time before the king starts making increasingly unreasonable demands, I fear. Uh, let's get another person working in this forester's hut, and straight away... How many how many workers have we got? I, I could afford it, sure. We'll expand it and put another person in there. Improve the axes as well. And get some better fertilizer. There we go. Not enough workers. That's a lie. We've got plenty. Plenty. Two is enough. Well, I mean, like, okay. Maybe not quite uh, enough. We've got quite a lot of jobs for them to do. Still, we've got two operating mines. A coal mine and a iron mine. I have improved their tools so that uh, we could pull down the cost of uh, operation. I would like to get 15 iron to improve the quarry if I were able. Uh, that being said, more hands would also help out quite a lot. In terms of taxes, uh, we're not really covering our costs, but we're kind of skirting the line. We're definitely feeling the pinch with food. Definitely need to start working on that a little bit more closely but i do believe we are finally at a point where we can afford to uh, pop down the toolsmith so let's get this place built and at the very least all of our workers will have tools that was always a massive problem in banished if you ran out of tools it was more or less a very slow decline until death for your for your city unless you could trade for them uh, however this toolsmith for the most part tools seem to be something that we use to upgrade buildings i've no doubt that it does actually get used for workers as well but uh, perhaps there are even some buildings that where the work is especially difficult and they need a uh, a constant supply of tools to maintain uh, production, whereas in most places they just need the raw materials and you kind of assume that they're taking care of the tools themselves. But I think that is about where we're going to be wrapping up this first taste. I hope you've enjoyed and uh, this glimpse into the game has answered some questions you might have or even just put the game on your radar if it wasn't already there. And apparently we've got some storage problems. Uh, of course we do. Uh, foremen are reporting that there was a rat infestation in one of the warehouses. We've lost some goods and uh, goods unfortunately. Uh, it is their job to ensure such things do not happen. If they fail, they can settle the differences. Oh, they won't be happy with that. Oh, such things do happen. Tell them to make sure it doesn't happen again. Uh, no, that is that is more or less literally what their job is. Please take care of things. But as always, if you enjoyed what you saw and you do want to see more, then leave me a like and or a comment on the video down below and perhaps we'll see an extended first taste as we uh, expand the village a little bit further. But right now, I think we're leaving it off in more or less a, uh, a comfortable, almost self-sufficient position. Certainly, the town has room to grow. So from me and everyone living here in the town of Dapperdell, until next time, do take care. <laughs>